Hello, hello. This is a little update on the Iceland situation. The eruption is not over, although the uh, eruption intensity of the surface seems to have declined. The eruption is continuing at the main Sundnuka cone, but uh, there is a few other aspects that are actually important. While the surface display of the volcanic activity is uh, reduced now, there is some other aspects we need to consider. And let me bring you to the uh, Icelandic Met Office page. So uh, I'll share my screen now. Here we are. Um, here we have the Met Office page. <clears throat> this is a post from uh, two, three days ago. And uh, this is April 26th. And uh, here the main cone is still active, but uh, part of the lava field near the berries east of Grindavik and also a little bit northeast of Grindavik continues to thicken slowly. We'll talk about that in a minute. The ground uplift at Svarts Engi continues. This is another kind of concern. And uh, as long as there's continuing accumulation of magma under the surface in the Swartz Engi Reservoir, this means the show is not over. And there is also continued gas emission. Let's go into that in a little detail. First of all, the swelling is an issue. So the Swartz Engi Reservoir sits a little bit west of the actual volcanic site. But uh, when we look at this diagram here, this is uh, days and uh, this is magma volume. Magma volume here is calculated from the inflation. This is INSAR data, satellite data of the inflation, and it uses a MOGI source. It uses uh, the concept of a source inside the crust that is inflating. And if you use that model, you can translate this inflation into volume of magma. It's a model, of course, but it's actually pretty reasonable in this context. And uh, what we see here in the diagram is that uh, the stars are marking eruptions and it shows the inflation prior to eruption and the little squares it's marking dike intrusions, i.e. situations of inflation that did not yield an eruption. But uh, the red one here, this is where we are right now. And um, the eruption is ongoing, but it's still inflating. And now we are reaching rates of inflation or volumes of inflation that we presume to be in terms of magma under the system there that are very similar to this one here. This was the period uh, 15th of January to 2nd of uh, February, and that yielded a little eruption. And then the yeah, the green one here is uh, uh, 19th of December until uh, 13th of January, and that yielded the January eruption. So uh, if this continues, we are in the same ballpark in terms of volume occurring relation as these earlier events. And that, of course, means there could be a new eruption fissure, as it says here, that could be opening up in that area. It doesn't have to be exactly where the current eruption is. It could be a little off. So there are speculations here about uh, Stora Skogfell or Hagerfell. But it could also be that uh, the Sundnuka crater row is uh, rejuvenated, reactivated in a major way, and there could be more activity there. So uh, we will have to see how this pans out if it comes to this. And uh, let me just bring you down here. So this is the model here, very simple sketch, but uh, we have magma coming in from a deeper reservoir. This deeper reservoir sits probably at about nine kilometer, uh, kilometers depth under the uh, Fagradas Fiatl system. And uh, there we have magma going laterally a little bit, and it's uh, supplying this Swartz Engi reservoir. And that Swartz Engi reservoir is still inflating despite the eruption going on. And that means more magma is pumped into the reservoir than is actually expelled at the crater site. And that means there is risk of more eruptive activity. So the other issue that is uh, relevant here is the gas, of course. And here you can just about see the faint outline of Iceland. This is, again, satellite imagery. This is from Sentinel-5. And there's the Reykjans Peninsula. And there we have this colored spot with red and yellow. That means there's sulfur. Sulfur molecules, SO2 molecules, uh, can be detected in, uh, in, in the satellite imagery. And there's this anomaly. Most of it is blown out onto the ocean towards the south. So it's not an acute problem for Reykjavik or Keflavik, but of of course, it could also uh, be blown towards settlements and certainly in the close vicinity, this is an issue. If you're working there, you would need to have a gas mask there because it can be very high gas concentration.
concentration very close to the volcanic site. The other issue that is still uh, a bit of a headache is actually the, let me go down there, is actually the inflation of the lava field, partly from flow into the lava field under the crust, but partly also from degassing you know, of lava in there. And here you can see the view from the south. This is the barrier. This is the southern lava that uh, didn't quite make it to the sea. And in that yellow box, you can just about see in this time-lapse imagery the difference. There is actually an inflation of the surface level without a change of the surface texture. So there is something being in the lava flow, being pumped into it or going on in there. As I said, it could be degassing, bubbles forming, but it could also be lava tunnels flowing. And here we have a similar situation at uh, the barrier here. This is the corner of the barrier. There's Grindavik in there. And there we see that uh, the lava is rising effectively and it may actually go beyond the level of the barriers. This doesn't necessarily mean that there will be lava spilling into there, but the berries could be partly covered. And that means new surface lava flows could actually travel um, across the lava field and then find it easier to go inside the berries. Let me try to bring that across in a, a map. Here's the map. And uh, this is the vents here. And uh, here is the Schwarzengi power plant and the berries around Schwarzengi. Here's Hagerfell. And uh, here is the Sundnuka crater. And this is the place we've just looked at. So uh, we have magma inflation um, in this whole area. Usually the magma is expelled here, being poured out to that. Here we have the thickest area, that's the reddish colors of the lava, but some of the lava seems to also travel in the lava field. And plus the degassing means that this whole area here is rising up and it's reaching the upper level of the barriers now. So this is a bit of a remaining issue. So uh, let me quickly bring you to the multi-view. Here's the multi-view. This is the vent and the vent doesn't do very much right now from this perspective. There's a tiny bit of uh, lava coming up here and it's got this area, this white area. This is degassing and this is likely the lava tube that sits at the bottom of the cone that feeds into the lava field. And uh, let me just uh, show you this view here. So this is now a perspective with the lava field. You don't see any lava on the lava field right now, but you see that white area here. This is likely where the tube, as I said, goes into this. And there's this other rather beautiful perspective, which is from a little higher up. And uh, here we are. So there we can uh, have a better look at the actual crater. So this is this white area. And every now and then you see a little bit of lava popping up. There's a bit of Strombolian activity, and this is where the degassing is. This white area is sublimates. It's usually sulfates and maybe a little bit of sulfur as well. This comes from the rising gases. And there's a bit of yellow here, so there is sulfur. And uh, this is likely where lava is traveling into the lava field. So this is where the lava field is fed, and likely with underground lava tubes. Inside the lava field, we are achieving this inflation. So the lava is not yet solid it's not over even though the cone doesn't display huge activity and the entire Svartsengi system or reservoir it's probably the better word that's a little off from the eruption site that is still inflating as well so we're not out of the woods it's not yet over and um, I think we have to uh, realize that uh, there is more to come. It might be safe right now. It might be calm for a few more days, but most likely there will be more activity in the next few weeks and certainly months. So uh, there is more to come in the area there. Thank you very much and uh, all the very best. Talk soon. Bye.